Right, what you've just seen is my high pressure pneumatic water cannon in action and um, you can make these very easily uh, of these um, old soda siphon bottles made by BOC used in the 60s and 70s. Um, nice thick bottle, they can take good high pressure and um, various other parts. You need two aluminium billets about uh, 35 millimeter in diameter, about 50 millimeter long. The handle is made out of a piece of a 22 millimeter diameter aluminium. Um, then I have ordinary hydraulic or air pneumatic fittings which you can buy on eBay. Um, this uh, Schrader to 1 8 BSP inlet. Um, you need a few uh, quarter inch BSP union fittings, um, an ordinary a ball valve, um, a lever operated ball valve and some hexagon brass bar and just convert the bottle over to make yourself a really nice gun. And as you've seen, you can actually use the ordinary foot pump to pump it up to about 200 PSI. Um, the uh, carbon dioxide um, cartridges with an ordinary uh, cycle fitting. Or you can actually use an ordinary um, compressor. And if you make one, just be very careful with um, compressed air. It's very dangerous. Um, use a good quality aluminium. I use 6082 T6 grade which is ideal for this project and check all the hydraulic um, pneumatic components that they're in within the safe limits of whatever air pressure you're using like this one here this Schrader to 1 8 BSP is rated at 500 PSI and I know that all the others are safe for what I'm doing and there's four main parts to make. Um, the critical part is the conversion of the bottle, the safe conversion, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, make a manifold and a spray nozzle end and the handle with the inlet valve. So what could this high pressure pneumatic water cannon be used for apart from having a bit of fun? Well I've made it so that the um, valve can be shut off, you can actually take the end off there um, to take out the actual nozzle and you can actually make different sized nozzles and experiment with it and see what um, distance you can get the water to fire. 
I've had this one firing about um, 60 feet uh, on 200 psi. You can use it for a refillable water fire extinguisher. You can fill it um, with weed killer to tackle the Japanese knotweed or other tall plants or fast growing weeds. You can use it for a deterrent for um, trespassers at night. You can fire this out of an upstairs window. A uh, good blast of this should see anyone off. Um, you can use it for unwanted animals in the garden um, to scare them off without hurting them. And in its dry state, um, you can use it for um, all different types of things. You can take this end off here and replace it with a um, quick release coupling like this Euro fitting here. And then use it to um, power small airbrushes like this one. Or again, when it's completely dry with um, good clean air in it, you can pressurise it, take it indoors and use a small uh, blowgun to clean out the dust of a computer or other equipment. So it has many different uses, um, but I do like the water cannon use best of all. Now these are very easy to pick up, there's loads on eBay and the first thing you want to do is check that there's no nasty dents in it and then take the top off and you don't use any of that and then you get a screwdriver and dig it into the plastic insert and pull that out like that and get rid of that and then use a wire brush on the Dremel and I buy these um, 25 millimeter diameter stainless steel wire brushes direct from China you can get about 25 of them for around a fiver uh, which is a lot cheaper than the single uh, branded ones and I found them just as good and you use that to thoroughly clean those both balls um, right back to the bare aluminium. If there's any stubborn um, coating in there just carefully scrape it off with a screwdriver or use a bit of um, emery cloth and then use the wire brush again and make sure that's lovely and clean and shiny like that. And when that's done, I measure up the front and back bore for diameter. Um, the front one on mine was 1.019 thou, and the back one was about 0.953 thou. Um, there's only a very narrow bore at the back and a longer bore at the front. Um, then I made up a plug to suit those bores. Um, I put two grooves in there. Um, for the Loctite 638. You could use an O-ring if you wanted to, but I just prefer using the Loctite 638. Absolutely smother it. And if it's a nice um, fit like that, where you can push it in, it's very close, but you can actually push it in and take it out. Fill it right up with the Loctite 638 and push it in and let that set. And you only have one chance of getting this dead right so it seals um, solid and doesn't leak. Um, the only way that you can actually break Loctite 638 um, when it's set is to use quite a bit of heat. And I wouldn't like to do that on this um, as it may weaken it. So I put a coating of... 638 around the bore um, there so I know that that's covered just smooth that round and then I fill up those grooves 
and they're not too deep they're just um, about 50 thou deep I'd say and fill that right up so you know that it's fully coated like that all the way around doesn't matter if you use too much so it's like that and then push that home and if you want it to set um, double quick you can just heat it up with a um, like a flash of a blowtorch or one of those heat guns but that's solid already and if you do use a heat gun um, you don't heat it up too hot just slightly warm and that'll be enough um, I haven't found a component which will actually screw down over that thread. I think it's a non-standard thread, only used for this uh, bottle. Um, you can't really use the top in any way because it's made of a dense plastic and there wouldn't be enough of it to get a good collar. So what I do, rather than making up a thread, finding out whatever size that is and making a thread up uh, with a component that screws down over, um, I put this in the lathe and just carefully skim the thread off then make a collar with a couple of grooves inside that will go over the top of that diameter and over the front face slightly uh, with Loctite 638 again and push that assembly on and then I put four evenly spaced steel bolts that go right through the collar through the diameter of the bottle here and about 50 thou into the plug so it doesn't break through into the quarter inch BSP hole it just locks the whole assembly together and it won't come off at all so you can see the one that I've done already what it looks like when it's finished the brass collar goes down over and traps the assembly onto the end of the bottle there all done with um, a good amount of Loctite 638 and then I drill four evenly spaced holes and tap them for 4BA put in the steel bolts with the Loctite again and that traps the whole assembly on there and that won't come off under pressure And now I'll just show you how I hold this awkward shape on the lathe to skim the thread. So you may wonder how I can hold an awkward shape like this and it took me a little while to figure it out myself. You put it on the end of the jaws so that they go into this um, dimple here and you put the live centre in the end of that plug and do that up nice and tight and then just open that out until it bites slightly on the aluminium and that's nice and solid and remember to lower the speed
and just take it down, leave a bit of thread there um, for the Loctite to go in and nice flats on the diameter and you'll see that I only took very light cuts for safety reasons. And if you're new to machining, um, this is a good example. Um, many people forget that you can actually use the jaws to open out onto a component and um, hold it like that. So next I made a nice thick aluminium collar for this one. I'm making it slightly different to my other one which had a brass collar on it. Um, so this one's got a good wall thickness and will fit the diameter that I've turned. Um, I didn't put any grooves in there because there's some still some grooves from the thread which the Loctite can go into. Um, so that one fits nicely down over that um, front face of the um, other plug. Um, this bore here is bored out so that when the quarter inch BSP Union screws into the end there with the doughty seal um, the nut won't actually clash with that bore and there's still enough um, room to get a spanner on it and then it's basically cover that one in uh, Loctite 638 again push that on and let that set so plenty of Loctite around the bore and round the diameter fill up the remaining threads like that so it's nice and coated evenly all the way round and then push the collar on like that and wipe out the excess and then that one's done So when that's set and you can't move it by hand, which is just a few seconds really, it's back on the lathe for the equally spaced bolt holes. So it's back on the MyFit ML7 and I've set up my tool post with a battery drill and I'm going to um, centre drill four equally spaced holes and then I'm going to do the drilling and tapping for 4BA. And another upgrade I've done on my MyFord ML7 recently on the MyFord indexing back plate is that I've numbered it all the way round. And I always start on the number 24 um, so I don't get mixed up. Also, I've done a modification on my oilers, um, the wick feed oilers. I did have a side hole through here which I covered up with tape. Um, to stop the oil um, from going down the wick after use um, but now I've made a valve on the top um, which you unscrew a few turns to let the oil flow and then screw it down to stop it and I will show that in another video at a later date so the lathe is switched off at the wall Saddle's locked in position, everything's on centre height and it's ready to go.
and then it's the drilling and then the tapping. So now I have the core drill for the 4BA screw thread in the chuck and I'll just show you a method that I use to get the drill holes exactly the same depth without actually breaking through into that quarter inch BSP through hole. Um, I've stuck a magnetic DTI clock on the drip tray of the ML7 and I've zeroed it on the end face of the actual cross slide, unlock the saddle, take the drill in front of the work, work out the depth that I want to go to and the clock is zeroed and if you do that you only want the first say 25-30 um, thou of movement you don't want the actual clock to go right the way round or it's easy to make a mistake so I know now that every time I go into that zero all the holes will be the same take the drill back out realign it with the center drill hole and lock the saddle up And that's the job done. And if I want to now, I can put the 4BA um, screw tap in there and do the tapping with the tool post drill. Um, but I'm going to just do it on the bench by hand. So that's the tapping done all the way round and nice and square. Um, if you have trouble um, doing tapping nice and square, then obviously do that on the machine. Then it's a case of getting some 4BA steel screws or bolts, I've got screws this time, sawing them to length um, to make sure that they go right the way down and put those in with Loctite 638 as well. So when that's finished um, it won't leak and it won't come apart and it will be able to withstand the pressure. And in my next video, I'll show um, you how I made the um, uh, manifold and how it all goes together.